Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings, saints of the Most High God. Blessings to you all in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Sikin, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There's something called high-level warfare. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When he says be strong, meaning we shouldn't be weak in prayers. When he says be strong, it means we should be studying his word. We should be studying, we should wait upon him, we should be fasting and praying. He says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise the Lord. That's what, then he went down to say that we should put on the whole armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Sorry, it's really noisy because these planes are passing out. I'm so sorry, and it's hot. I had to open the window a little bit. So please bear with me. He says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says that we should put on the whole armor of God so that we'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against physical. What are we wrestling against? But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It says, wherefore take unto you the arm, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, feed shot with, with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith to quench fiery darts of the enemy, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Then it went down to tell us that we should be praying always with all prayer and supplication. Brothers and sisters, the invisible world or the unseen realm is wider and deeper than this world that you are looking at. This world that we are living in is deep. I wish I can go ahead to share some very deep encounters that I've had, but I'll begin to do them from time to time, one by one. There were times that I'll go into a trance, some of them, I used to know when it's about to happen. And when I'm close by, maybe my husband is close to me, I will just tell him, I will indicate and let him know that it seems the Lord wants to show me something. And boom, I'll fall into a trance because I got to that level to know when it was going to happen. And sometimes I can't even, I can't even make it to finish the sentence. Sometimes I might say, he seems the Lord wants to show me. Before I even say something, I'm gone. It happens like that. Sometimes true visions, true. Sometimes I might be praying with someone and I'll begin to see things. He will give me the ability to, he has given us the ability. Most of us, we have it, but some of us, your gifts, they are closed up, some they are caged, some it's just that you've not really, um, it's just that you've not really sick. Well, I, all I have to say is just seek the Lord. Wait on him, fast and pray. Don't go to him asking him, Father, give me, uh, make me a prophet or make me a this or make me a that. No, because I'm telling you, we that operate in that kind of gift, sometimes we run. We want to run. If you see genuine people who are carrying this, sometimes they, if, if it's possible, they want to run. Just like our Lord Jesus Christ said, if it's possible that this cup should pass. Praise the Lord. Like I said, sometimes when I'm gone, my husband will be praying if it's there, but if it's not there, sometimes it's just me and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So some people might be wondering, 
where is this in the Bible? If you don't mind, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 10. The book of Acts chapter 10. Acts 10, 10. I'll just read that quickly. It says, uh, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made, he's talking about Peter. Let me even start from nine. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Oh, this noise is so bad. He fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. And it had been a great sheet neat at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. That was a trance Peter was having at that time. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes, like I said, and it might be a vision, and I believe it happens to some other people, some of you that will come across this video. I believe you experienced that as well. Because there was an encounter I was having where I said I came into a place where there were so many millions of roses and I was bouncing up. I was like a, like a, like a four-year-old child jumping and bouncing. It was as if I was a child again. And this experience was so sweet, so beautiful, so, so beautiful. As I was running, an angel told me, you are going to tell them, you are not the only one who is seeing things like this. So I believe there's so many people who are experiencing things like this that I'm talking about. Just like I said some time ago in this channel where I had an encounter and the Lord showed me Moses, and he showed me Elijah, John the Baptist, John the Beloved. Then I did not know who John the Beloved was. You know, all these are experiences that I have had. Maybe once in a while I'll just come out do a short clip like that and you know, just to encourage somebody. Praise the Lord. So, like I said, sometimes it's visions or sometimes in a dream or in a trance close the open vision why am i saying this i discovered these days a lot of christians christians i'm talking to christians actually a lot of christians are dabbling into dark arts a lot of christians are gradually going down deeper into new age spirituality a lot of christians are already operating in it and a lot of Christians call themselves Christian witchcraft, no Christian witches. And so many Christians are even operating under these witches and they don't even know it. Some people are having attacks, some are complaining of headaches, some are complaining of different, you know, wait. Okay, let me tell you this scenario that happened. I was praying in a fellow sister's house. This is back home, like so many years ago roughly 20 years ago so I was there with my prayer partner and we started praying as we were praying I had a vision right there and I saw two people a lady and a man both of them very very angry with this lady this lady that we came to her house this lady that we came to her house to pray these two people were very angry. I didn't know them. I just came with my prayer partner to this lady's house. It was actually through my prayer partner I got to know this lady. So we came to her house and as we were praying this vision came and I saw two people very very angry with this woman. So I turned to the lady who, were, who I was praying in her house. I said, um, 
there, there's these two people I'm seeing right now that the Lord is showing me. Is a man and a woman. Did you by any chance drive them out of this house? She said, yay. Yes, 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 yes. I said, who are they? She said, ah, that they are her husband's relatives. That they were living in the same house. These are supposed to be Christians. Hello, these are Christians that they were living with her in that house before. Very big house, if you see this house that we went, mighty house, that they were living in that house. But so many things were happening, they started falling out, they started fighting, quarreling. So she had no choice but to kick both of them out. And these two people, they were after her life. So she was going through series of attacks and she did not know what to do till she talked with my prayer partner and that one now contacted me. That's how we came. You can imagine these two witches living in this woman's house. And in that vision that I saw, they, their plan was, because this woman was pregnant, their plan was to wait till she was going to give birth. That was the plan I told the lady because that was the revelation I got at that time as we were praying. That was what was coming. They were going to wait for her during her delivery. And God helped her that prayer started because who knows what would have happened. These witches, you don't joke with them. They can be dangerous, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can defeat them. And if you have the Holy Spirit, we Christians, we are so easy and so quick to, to, to just go to any place to receive. When you see people gathering in a place, oh, we feel that's where God is. But somebody can be operating in divination and you think it's God. Someone can be operating in witchcraft and you think God is there because the person is prophesying. Some people who are operating, they have marine spirit. They can begin to prophesy to you. They can tell you your future. They can tell you everything happening in your home. That does not mean that they are truly operating in God or with God. That does not mean that they are actually true worshippers of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, King Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it's good for us to be careful and watch out. Like I said, these people are Christians. I'm talking to Christians. This is another scenario I'll tell you. I had a revelation where there's someone I know very, very well. And they brought someone into their house. This person was living in their house. And they brought this person from a different state to come and stay with them to you know, start school and start living with them since their children had gone out of the house. They were now big and they were no longer with them. So they needed someone to be at home with them at least, which is a good thing, but it turned out to be bad. It turned out to be nightmare. So I had this dream one morning, very horrible dream. I've never seen anything like that. It just occurred that this, I saw this lady's house and then in the center of their house, center of the living room precisely, I saw like a big opening. And this opening, it was as if it was just swirling, it was just opening. And that that was opened, someone was going from there down and coming out. It was, it's, it was, I just summarized this, but I wish I can explain it very well. But when I opened my eyes, oh God, I started getting ministration that, that a portal has been opened in that lady's house. And this person who they brought in was a very high ranking marine witchcraft. She opened a portal there. That was a very dangerous thing to do. And this house, belonged to a pastor and a wife. And this kind of 
serious case was going on in, right inside the home. I called up this lady and said, what in the world is going on? She said, look at the kind of attacks that she has been having. I said, they have opened a portal in your house. Get up, rise up, because where they are is a very, is a different uh, continent. I said, rise up, get people, start praying. It took, in fact, it was, it was a bad situation. It was a terrible situation because this person took over the house and started operating and started almost ruling them in the house because of the kind of powers she thought she possessed. And this person goes to church, goes to church every Sunday, weekday service, she's in church. Christians, born again Christians. The funny part is all these people are Christians. That's where I'm going. They go by the name born again. They go to church. Even some of them, some of them are in the choir. Even they can be ministers. This is the world that we are living in. Trust me, it's going to get worse. That is where the, that is why we need the armor of God. I do not go to God to say, Father, give me this gift, give me that, give me this. Some people pray for it, but some people are giving. For you to have the gift of it, a seer, God has already deposited it inside of you. You don't learn the skill. You don't learn it. Some people are imparted, but some people are born with it. Some people pray for it, but some are given. Some people pray for a gift and other people might want to have. You know, sometimes you see that's the dangerous part. Many Christians go to God praying, Father, give me this anointing. Give me this man's anointing. Give me this man's mantle. Give me the mantle of Elijah, the mantle of this, mantle of John the Baptist. God has already given you what he wants to give you. He said he has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. Whatever he has deposited in you is for you to cultivate it, not for you to pray for another man's mantle. Some people walk on dangerous grounds. Sometimes you pray for something you cannot carry. You might be praying for something and God has not given you the capacity to carry that. Then the moment you carry it, you get messed up. The moment you carry it, that's why you see some people wounded. You go to battle and you get wounded because you don't know the right skills. You don't know the right strategies to defeat the enemy. Some people are just zealous. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. Sometimes people pray and say, Father, give me this gift, give me this gift. As you are praying, because you want to consume it upon your lust, another spirit will enter and inhabit. I've seen this happen to somebody. I've seen it happen to someone. This person was so zealous. She was always praying for something. And then God showed me another spirit was sitting down beside her when she was prophesying. Another spirit was right there. And he showed me her sleeves were cut off in that vision. And the spirit was talking to her. There's a demon that was sitting down on the ground. She was sitting on the chair. She carried the Bible. But another spirit was speaking to her. And she, she was messed up. Watch what and how you pray for what you want. Watch how you pray. Watch what you pray for. And watch what you want. Brethren, all I can say is pray. Witchcraft is very real. There was a case where someone was being oppressed by their co-workers. You know, the supervisor was oppressing this person and treating this person so bad. And this person reached out to other believers and said, please, pray with me. It was a group she reached out to. Guess what happened? This group now started praying. And one of them now said he did a prophetic action on this supervisor. And now called up this lady who, came, who called them for prayer. He said, how far, how is everything going? How is the supervisor now? And the lady now said, well, the way the supervisor is behaving is as if she's losing her mind. So this prayer group leader now told her, 
and said, very good. So she asked them, she said, what did you people do? The, guess what the prayer group the leader, the, the guy who was praying, do you know what he said? He said, oh, concerning your supervisor, we shifted her brain. He said they shifted the supervisor's brain. How do you shift somebody's brain? That is another high level witchcraft. Brothers and sisters, high level witchcraft situations are performed by Christians. I pray that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened. I pray so many Christians' brains are being shifted by Christians today. They call it prayers and prophetic action. New age practices is gradually taking over Christianity. Christians beware, open your eyes. These are the last days. Take a look at what is going on all over. When did we as Christians start selling products like Maybe the products that take our eyes away from the Bible. Pro physical products like burning of sage, burning of incense, all those things. The Bible says, the last time I checked, the Bible says God is a spirit. Those that worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth. I saw a lady the other day. You know, sometimes you, you watch a clip and other ones will be coming, dropping. So as I was just scrolling through, I saw a live program on, a live program. And the moment I clicked, I saw this lady holding a bunch of bananas and she was using it to pray. And before you know it, because when you click on one video, that same channel will uh, suggest more videos of that. The next time again that I went online, this same um, church or this same channel was on and this lady it took the next after that bunch of bananas that she was using to pray this time she was calling on people to bring their coconuts and obviously if you click on that place you will see many many other objects that they are using to pray all these demonic practices they open doors to the demonic without checking first what you are doing, let it and make sure what you are doing align with the word of God. Many Christians today are operating in witchcraft. They are using divination on their members. By God's grace, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the Kundalini Yoga. I'm going to talk about Kundalini Yoga. I'm going to talk about tarot reading. I'm going to talk about Reiki healing. I'm going to talk about Sage and Palo Santo for, for smudging. I'm going to talk about crystals, astrology, angel numbers, evil eye, and if God permits, so many other things that you need to watch out for. Open your eyes. Christians who operate in all these acts that I just called, Kundalini Yoga, Tarot reading, dream catch, having dream catchers in their houses, chakra aligning. Some people have book of manifestation. Crystals, Reiki healing, astrology, angel numbers, all those things, they are all spirituality. All of these people, they need deliverance. Do you know that there's a group known as Christian witches? A witch is a witch. And the last time I checked, the Bible condemns the act of witchcraft. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Praise God. And witchcraft is... The rebellion is like witchcraft. So if we're going against God's word and operating in witchcraft, we are going against God. And God hates it. So hate what God hates. The moment you begin to do other practices that are against the will of God, you are an enemy of God. You are performing rituals. Desist from all these acts. I pray that the almighty God will see us through. I pray that the Most High will open our eyes to see clearly beyond the ordinary so that whoever comes to us or whoever we are listening to or watching, we pray that God will grant us discernment so that we will know the true and we will know the ones that are not true. Be careful. These are the last days. There are so many of them operating 
under the name Christian. So many of them operating and prophesying and people want to hear prophecy. You can prophesy to yourself. You can be a greater prophet if only you make up your mind to settle down and focus on God and God alone. Remain blessed and remember John 3.3, 3, John 3.5, Acts 2.38. I'm paraphrasing. He says, you must be born again. You must be born of water and of the spirit. And he says, repent. If you have engaged yourself in this kind of acts, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And he shall give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need all this sage. When you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need, you don't need crystal healing. You don't need uh, Reiki healing. You do, when you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need all those angel numbers. You don't, what, is, what are angel numbers? You don't need all those astrology. You don't need any spirit guide. Demonic, they are all demonic guides. Some people say they have their own angel following them. They have spirit guide. Where is that? May God have mercy on us Christians and help us. Remove laziness, may God. It's laziness because most times we don't want to study the word of God. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. But rightly dividing the word of truth. If we are, if we are able to study God's word, we will not go after all this demonic practices of um, Scientology or New Age movement or Eastern religion. We will not. We will not. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he came. He paid a huge price for us. He came to set the captives free. He came that we may have life. The Bible says in him was the life. The life was the light of men. In him was life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend it. You are the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He says we are the light. We shine in darkness. So when we shine, darkness has to dissipate and disappear. When we shine our light brighter and brighter, witchcraft activities, they, have to, they will give way at the call of the name of King Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Hopefully, I'll see you again in the next, by God's special grace. Give your life to the Savior. He is coming very soon. Are you ready for his coming? Prepare to meet with the Lord. Shalom.